the, the unified theory of autism attempts to reconcile several observations. The first observation is that siblings with autism is more common than one would expect if each in incident of autism was, was random. So if a child is born, has autism, a brother is born, the chance that that brother has autism is much higher than a male b born to another family. And twins, identical twins, have an extremely high concordance, uh, something like 90 percent. There is no other cognitive disorder whose concordance among identical twins is as high. So those two facts tell you that there's a genetic component to autism. However, there are families that have autistic children, and they are large families, and only one child will have autism. So the genetics would look to be complicated. There's an inherited component because siblings have a higher rate of concurrence. Um, but there might, might also be a sporadic component. Um, so the issue is how to reconcile that. Uh, I think that prior to our series involvement in the field, people assumed that there was what is called a complex inherited model, that there are many genes that may be in the wrong state in the parents, which come into some combination in the child. So the children of these parents have a higher chance of having autism. But it's not a classical Mendelian pattern where you know half of your kids have it or a quarter of your kids have it. Half will have it if it's a dominant, a quarter if it's recessive. The pattern seemed more complicated than that. What we did was come in and say, well, you know, it could be a combination of both. In some families, it is perhaps simple Mendelian. And in other families, it's spontaneous. And if you assume that there are a large number of genes that can give you autism, then you could have a very large proportion of, of autism being generated by spontaneous mutation. But if the mutations don't all have um, complete, what's called complete penetrance, that is, you can pass on the mutation and the child can carry it and not show the disorder, then his or her children could then be at risk in a Mendelian way of inheriting that gene. So combining these two ideas, that the sibling risk is really a combination of simple Mendelian in some families, with other families being spontaneous mutation, unifies these two observations and does so in a, with a coherent model. So the coherent model is that humans are mutating. Uh, the rate of new mutation uh, giving rise to autism is perhaps on the order of 1 in 200 kids, and something like half of those kids actually don't come down with a diagnosis. They mature, they get married, they have children, and those children are then at risk from the carriers. Now, one of the very important clues uh, that is compatible with this model is that the uh, risk of autism is much higher in boys than in girls. If the model Almost any model is, would predict that whatever genetic abnormalities exist in a boy, those genetic abnormalities will exist in a girl. So girls have something that makes them resistant. So girls, in fact, could be natural carriers of genes that in a boy would give the boy autism. And that girl might grow up and, and, and be healthy and a desirable mate and have children. And her, her children, in particular her, her male offspring, might be at high risk because they might inherit the gene that she safely uh, carries. That's the, um, that's the essence of, of the unified theory. It does not explain why autism, uh, why boys are at higher risk than girls. But it does suggest that you can have two forms of, an, of genetic involvement, an inherited involvement from a carrier parent and um, also, uh, those rare mutations that destroy a gene in the germline. Now, I should say, um, and I really have to mention this, that in the model we're not saying that only women are carriers. In fact, there's a well-known uh, example, it's been in, in the news, of a, 
of a male sperm donor who had something on the order of 20 male offspring, and half of them had autism. So that's clearly a case where uh, the sperm donor, who was, I guess, judged to be normal, probably maybe even brilliant or a genius, um, was a carrier of a simple, dominantly inherited Mendelian trait. The incidence of autism goes up with the age of the parent, and that's entirely consistent with uh, the mu new mutation idea, because it's, it's already well established in males that the number of point mutations uh, found in the male's offspring go up with the age of the father. And there's also um, a correlation with the age of the mother. So there may be a mild increase in the rate of autism uh, in those cultures where uh, having children is deferred and delayed. Um, the magnitude of that effect is not going to explain the overwhelming explosion in the number of diagnoses, but there may be a, a mild increase in the rate of autism due to that. And the age dependence on, on, the, on the parents is consistent with the new mutation uh, hypothesis. Mm -hmm.